So we're talking about the six kind of components of, of REIOS is tell the truth, define your future self, goal alignment, the ultimate life hack, radical accountability, and relentless improvement. This is a, a very scientific and psychological studied approach to achieving a big life. Like I've been, I've been studying this stuff for over a decade. I wrote the intention journal for Bigger Pockets uh, based on this, on the data, and just been refining it more and more and more because I am obsessed with helping people live the best version of their of their life and by optimizing every part of your life. And there's a process to get there. I mean, really, if you want to think of REIOS as a bridge, think of it as a bridge or a path over a gap where on one side you have where you are today. Like this is where you stand right now, which is why we start with telling the truth. And then there is a vision of you in the future. There's a ideal version of yourself, like something that you want in life that you want to go after. That is where we kind of get to the meeting your future self or defining your future self. In between though, is a huge gap. We generally lack is that connection, that bridge between where I am and where I want to get to. Uh, and I am very, very focused on helping people get there. Imagine that you're very clear on where you are today. And there's several components of that. Things like we're starting with reflection, we'll talk about that. Why are you here? You begin with gratitude and reflection that says, where, are my, where am I today? What am I happy about? When we begin with like, oh, what do I don't have? And what am I lacking? And what am I struggling with? And where am I not measuring up? We're not able to fully envision that future self as well. So that's why we start here. Like, who are you grateful for? Who are you thankful for? What's some amazing places you've been to and seen? What are some unique opportunities you've had in your life? What are some amazing things about the place you live right now? And I think it's good to just remember like, or to get into that frame, that mindset that says, I can overcome anything. I can do anything. I've overcome this. Look how far I've come. And we start with this reflection and gratitude. I even do a practice in person. I wouldn't do it now because it'd be too weird, but we're like, you get in a group of people and you close your eyes and like there's music playing and you just reflect. In fact, after like an hour of breath work, this works really cool. If you if you guys have never been to a breath work session, I highly recommend it, like a good breath work session. There's just something almost mystical about it where it's like uh, you basically get getting high on your own supply is what they say. Like you're hyper oxygenating your, your blood which makes you think more clearly and brings more emotion to your thoughts, which is super interesting. We do it at a lot of the Better Life uh, events. So we did it at the, uh, I think we did it at the marriage retreat, but I know we did it at uh, the, the summit here in December. There's a good chance you have equity in your property and we need to tell the truth and be honest about the equity and the return that you're getting on your equity. Most people are getting a terrible return on their equity right now. How much cash flow are you making, like actual pure cash flow right now on that rental property that you own? $2,000 a year? in actual cash flow after repairs and maintenance and vacancy and all that. If you're making 2000 bucks a year, you might think you're doing pretty good, but if you have $100,000 in equity, you're getting a 2% return on equity. And this again, why we start with telling the truth is we need to know what our portfolio looks like. We need to know what our, our cash flow looks like. We have a cash flow statement coming. I didn't get it finished yet. Something that you can use to track all your income and expenses on your rental properties. Uh, we're getting that done too as well. That's the first component here of our EIOS. It's telling the truth. And we'll be adding more to that over time, more frameworks. I'll be teaching more of them in upcoming financial freedom hours. Uh, but I'm just, I'm such a big believer that we have to start by telling the honest truth. All right, we got to move on. Let's talk about defining your future self. The five-year future you really helps you drill into who you want to become and how you want to function in life five years from now. When you wake up in the morning, what do you like to do? What is your family like? What are some cool things you do? What are some cool things you own? When people talk about you, what do they say? So this is a five-year future you, but what I wanna to move toward is the five-year future real estate edition. Why don't we start with what kind of real estate do you invest in five years from now? Now, there are two ways to fill this out. And in fact, you may wanna do it two different ways. And one is, what are you going to pursue now? Like what is, what is starting going forward from today? What are you looking for? And there's six components to the crystal clear criteria. In fact, why don't we stick with that? Let's let's drop down from the five year and go to the to the, to the the immediate future. What strategy are you pursuing? When I say strategy, I'm talking: Are you flipping houses? Are you doing uh, the burr strategy? Are you you know what are you do, what are you doing? Number two, property type. What are you trying to buy? Self storage facilities, mobile home parks, single family houses, small multi, large multi, commercial, uh, you know, retail. What are you trying to buy? This document is, I think, one of the most simple yet most important documents a real estate investor can fill out because most investors don't have a clear understanding of what they're looking for. And it's their lack of clarity that leads to their lack of growth. I'm going to say that again. It's lack of clarity that leads to your lack of growth. If you are crystal clear, on what it is that you are buying next and what you're going after. Now you can gain the expertise to become good enough 
to actually take those properties down. It's really easy. It's really easy to want to do everything. I'm, actually, I'm the same way. I want to buy them all. I love all real estate. And I'm not saying you can't buy multiple types. Many people are fine that way. But if you haven't, I'm sure you've all noticed that it is a competitive, really hard time to invest in real estate right now. And I don't think it's going to get easier. What I mean by that is it's not just hard right now because of the interest rates. It's hard because there's 10 times more people that are interested in investing in real estate than there was a decade ago. And a lot of that's probably my fault. <laughs> I feel like bigger pockets and the books. It's like, it's a, there's so much, it's just the internet in general has made real estate investing so much more accessible. And so it's really hard to win today unless you are an, an expert, unless you are the best. We're gonna move on to goal alignment. Now I wanna teach two things about goals real quick. You probably heard me say it before, but I'm just gonna visit it real fast. Goals, when people, when most people in the world set goals, they say things like, I wanna be fitter. I want to be happier. I want to have more muscle. It's, it, they're so vague. And so what I want to encourage people with is the idea of a smarter goal. You've heard smart goals. I'm going to add, I added on the ER. I invented two, two more on the smart goals. A smarter goal is one that is specific. It is measurable. It is actionable. It is relevant. It is time bound. It is exciting and it is risky. Exciting means it actually fires you up. Like, let's not set goals around like things that we don't really care about. Like, is it important to you? Then you're going to pursue it. So let's find out what's important to you and rework our goals until it's exciting. And let's make sure it's risky, meaning it's not guaranteed. You're going to have to work at it. You might fail at it. Because if you're setting goals like, I'm going to go to the gym four times this quarter. You went 10 times last quarter. That's not a risky goal. Another aspect about goals I'll just throw out there is there's different types of goals. An outcome goal is like, I lost 25 pounds. I'm going to run five miles. I'm going to purchase one property. Those are great for like almost all types of goals. I love outcome goals. They're great. So for future vision or for annual goals, quarterly goals, your weekly one, outcome goals can be great for that. Process goals, on the other hand, are over time. I'm going to exercise 30 minutes a day. I'm going to analyze 10 deals every single week. I'm going to read for an hour every single night. I said this the other day, but I'll say it again now. My wife and I were not able to have kids for the first 10 years. Like we just never had kids. It didn't happen. Uh, we wanted kids really badly and we just couldn't have kids. And so I literally used the process that we're talking about today to have kids. Uh, we, you know, we started setting goals around it. Like we want to have kids within three years, two years, one year. Okay, what do we got to do to be able to do that? What's our quarterly goal? Let's go to a doctor, figure out what's going on, go get tested. We both went and got tested. That was our goal for a quarter. It's a way to take your annual goal and divide it into quarters. By the end of quarter four is your annual goal. But if we had to work backwards, what would that look like? We know what our five-year future version of that is. I know exactly where I'm headed. I know where I am and I know where I'm headed. And now we're filling in the gaps in between. Now we've got an annual goal in that category of one of the areas you wanted to work on. We now have an annual goal. By the end of 2024, you're gonna have what? We now also have a quarterly goal that aligns up with it. Do you guys see how powerful this can be when we, when we work this goal setting system and we have a process for getting to where we wanna to get to? Like, how are we not gonna hit this? Well, easy. But ultimately, what actually determines your success in life is the regular actions you take. You can set a goal, you can set an annual goal, a quarterly goal, but if you don't do regular ongoing work, you're not going to get the results. You get the results of what you repeatedly do. So how do you know what to repeatedly do? Well, that's this section, the ultimate life hack, H-A-C-K. There are habits. That is a regular practice or routine that is carried out on a consistent basis, oftentimes every day or multiple times per week. So when we're going to track our habits, an example would be wake up by 6 a.m., analyze three rental properties per day, walk 10,000 steps. An action is like a specific task I'm going to do this week. It's like a one-time thing. So I'm going to go to the real estate meetup on Tuesday. I'm going to make an offer this week. I'm going to go to the doctor and ask about peptides, whatever. It's like a specific one-time thing or not a regular thing. That's an action. A constraint is something you do not do, right? We talked about that earlier. So no, and it could be either you don't do or you have limits around. You have guardrails around. So an example would be no screen time after 6 p.m. No alcohol or drugs, period. Only 30 minutes of television per day. So you see how this one's a flat out no, and these two are limitation. And finally, a KPI in the business world, KPI stands for key performance indicators. It's a measurable value that demonstrates how effectively a company is achieving key business objectives. When we talk about KPIs inside the Better Life Tribe, we're referring to the process of tracking one's habits, one's actions, and one's constraints meticulously inside the Better Life Action Tracker, gamifying one's pursuit of their ideal identity. What I really want to do is make sure that I'm tracking at least one, if not more, 
habits or actions or constraints. Really, it's habits or constraints, but actions will come in in a second. I'm, I want to make sure I'm tr I'm tracking something, an action that will help me hit my quarterly goal. How many times have you ever set a goal in your life? Have you ever done this? I have. You set a goal and then months go by and you forget you even set that goal because like you haven't been focused on doing the actions around it. We don't want that. We want goal alignment. So we want to make sure that you're setting goals, but you're also you're tracking the actions that are going to make that goal actually come true. It's not rocket science. It's just a process. The problem is we just lack adherence to a system. Most people do not have clear goals, which we have solved today. We have clear goals and you know how to clearly define your goal for both the annual and quarterly. You know what your future, where you're headed, so you can set the right goals. You also know how to take those goals into quarterly goals because quarterly goals are way more important than annual goals. But you also know that just having a quarterly goal isn't enough. You know how to set weekly habits and actions and constraints that make you a better person, a better husband or wife, a better parent or child. You you know how to add these habits in now. You guys are rock stars, but we're not done. Uh, we're gonna talk about accountability here in a second because at the end of the day, even if you're doing this, most people fall off the wagon. Most people will track for a few weeks, they get excited about it for a few days maybe, and then they're off the wagon. So I wanna help you make sure that doesn't happen to you. So radical accountability is the idea of you're not doing this alone. You have a pod, you have a group of people, we call them pods. You have a group of people, five to 10 other people that you meet with for just an hour once a week. Yes, it's optional, but it's so helpful to have this. If you show up for an hour, and the way that these pods work is we always start together. This might be changing at some point because I don't really need to be there to start every pod meeting. Like I always give announcements at the beginning, like, hey, this is what we're doing, but that's kind of a lot of work. So in the reality, most people would rather just get right into their pods. So that might be changing at some point soon. I always offer a question. We call it the intention question. Every week there's a new question just designed. It's designed to get everyone just in the moment, like present with their future self. So it's usually a question like, hey, what's one area of your life you let slip last week? Or what is a relationship you need to mend? So last week, I committed to having seven perfect days of eating because I was a little bit behind my goals. I did not do that. I only got five days of good eating and two days I destroyed my diet on it. So let's do a little test here. Based on what I just told you all, throw in the chat room, what's a question that you would ask me to try to hold me accountable? Why do you think you stopped your diet? You know, that's a great question, Joel. I had friends come over to the house. And they brought pie. They literally brought Maui pie, which is like this incredible pie shop. And so I had a piece of pie and then I had another piece of pie. And then by that point I was already like, well, I'm screwed. So I just ate a cookie and a bunch of other cookies. That's honestly the truth. Ooh, Doug said, what are you going to do differently next week? That's going to change your next week. If I would have simply said ahead of time, I am not going to have any dessert tonight, no matter what somebody brings. If I would have texted that to my pod and said, Hey guys, I'm having a dinner with friends tonight and I'm trying to eat perfectly healthy this week. I'm going to struggle if somebody brings a good dessert. Just by me saying that, my pod, because I know the guys in my pod, I got some good dudes in my pod. They're going to be like, all right, I'm going to text you later tonight. I'm going to make sure. They would literally do that. Then they would set, like, that's what radical accountability looks like is my pod mates would make sure that I didn't have that pie. In fact, they might even go as far because they know my friends to text my friends and tell them not to let me have pie or to text Heather and be like, hey, Brandon's made a commitment to not have pie tonight. They radically are holding me accountable to the person that I said I want to become. That's radical accountability. And that's what my hope is for the Better Life Tribe and for your pod, is that this is not a group of five people, six people, seven people getting together to chat, to say, how is your week? What are you struggling with? Good for you, like, let me give you a hug. This is radical accountability. The last segment I wanted to cover today on the REIOS system is called Relentless Improvement. The idea of Relentless Improvement is a few, it's a few things. One, it's your ongoing education. It's saying, I'm never gonna be satisfied with where I'm at. I'm always gonna wanna get better. And we do that in a number of ways inside the tribe. One of them, we do financial freedom hours. Every week I teach a call, or if I'm not there, somebody else will teach a call on my behalf. Like I think next week I have somebody else coming in to substitute teach. They're always experienced real estate investors. They're always millionaires. They're always successful, like people who are like black belt real estate investors. But generally I'm teaching financial freedom hours. Here's a few of the calls that you can go watch anytime you want to right now. Deal analysis mastery, build a powerful morning routine for 2024, how to build wealth fast with multifamily rental properties, benefits of the buy and hold strategy or build to rent strategy, 20 concepts every real estate investor should know, 14 tips for cash flow and rental properties with Cam Cathcart, that was a substitute teacher one, buy back your time with Dan Martell, Dan Martell is the man, uh, that was such a 
such a great episode. Uh, flipping and scaling, pro tips for flipping and scaling your business. That was a uh, guest episode. The seven considerations for when to sell a rental property. Big deals at the beginning, how to bypass small real estate deals and get started with the big ones. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for trusting me with uh, a little aspect of your future. I hope I can help make your life better and you can therefore make the world around you, your family, your friends, your community, and the world a little better as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.